Hey everyone, it's Abby and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, fountain pens. And um, I always get questions about how I decide which pen I use. I also got a lot of comments in my previous fountain pen video saying they like, you like my recommendation. So thank you so much for that. But I wanted to hone in on some of the factors that you can consider while choosing your favorite fountain pen, your go-to fountain pen, or in the fountain pen community, we call it the grail pen, the holy grail pen. But in general, I do want to walk you through some of the things that I consider when it comes to picking fountain pens that go into my collection. If you haven't watched yet i did have a how to use fountain pens for beginners video a couple of years back i feel like it aged pretty well so you can check it out and that was me like two years ago where i first got into fountain pens so my knowledge isn't as broad and i'm gonna go ahead and say that i am not an expert in this i merely love it and also i have my own stash for um fountain pens but i am not um the expert okay i don't want to put that in your head and there are a lot of youtube videos you can check out about fountain pens but i definitely want to share my two cents about how i pick my fountain pens and how you can decide which pens will make it to your collection that you will really love and really appreciate and really use for your journaling for writing or anything that involves using the pen or collecting the pen but yeah, let's dive right in. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you five things to consider when it comes to picking your favorite or finding your favorite fountain pen. I feel like it's it's an ongoing journey as in a sense where the more you try out different pens and meet people who have pens and also just look at videos and like figuring out what pen and ink combination works, then you'll finally find your sweet spot i would say and that's very rare and it takes a lot of time but i will assure you you will find a pen that works for you so let's get started so the first thing i want you to consider by the way these aren't in like chronological order is to consider the nib size so fountain pen nibs generally have two sizes. There's the German one and the Japanese one. And German nibs in general are thicker, the Western nibs. And the Japanese ones are a bit thinner, which is pretty obvious because Japanese um, characters are finer. So pen brands, for example, like Pilot or Sailor or Nagasawa or Platinum, um, they use what else? What else are the Asian brands? I think pretty much that one. They use uh, Japanese nibs. Although it depends on some pens, but in general, they use Japanese nibs. And the thing here is when you write with Chinese characters or Japanese characters, I am Chinese myself, so I do. I don't write all the time in Chinese, but I definitely um, know why it's really fine because of the strokes. They're very delicate compared to um, Western nibs or German nibs. Um, it's a bit thicker. So usually the Japanese nibs are one size down. So it's something to consider if you have small or fine handwriting or if you write really big because that will also determine what pen you should get and what nib. Um, alternatively, some pens can also be, some nibs can be interchanged depending on the brand. For example, Coveco, you can uh, buy their nibs and then you can actually twist them and change them up if you feel like switching from medium to fine. But just a general rule of thumb, for example, the German fine, like this Lamy, is German fine. Um, the thickness of the fine nib for German fine versus um, a Kakuno Pilot Fine, Pilot Kakuno Fine is basically um, two different things. So it tends to become a bit finer for how many times have I said fine in a sentence? But generally it's one size down. But generally for me, after like several attempts to try different nibs, I just end up picking fine or extra fine. I think I'm more of the fine. I usually get fine 
Japanese nibs and then for Sailor I usually get medium fine so Sailor is the only brand that has the medium fine so medium fine for me is like the middle of fine and medium and for German I usually get extra fine or fine I do have one or two pens that are on the medium side which is fine but for me it's just a nice like addition to my collection it's not it's just not something I always reach out for Next up, we have to talk about the weight of these pens. So I have a bunch of pens in different weights, but I will definitely tell you that my Pilot Custom 83 is probably the heaviest one among the bunch, and it's also the longest. We'll talk about size later. But in general, you know, most pens, like the beginner pens, for example, these Lamy pens, they are very light and they're very good for beginners. And ideally, it also depends on your lifestyle. So if you just write on a desk every day and you have your pens by your side, like just open a drawer and your pens are there and then you're writing and don't have to take them out, well, honestly, it's fine to just have heavier weight pens. But for example, for me, I travel a lot. So when I travel, I always bring a Caveco Sport with me just because it's very lightweight. It's actually make, made of plastic. But there are other Cavecos that are a bit heavier, like brass or the aluminum sport, the Al Sport. But most pens are generally like 25 grams or under. And it's not really about the weight of like just the initial carrying of it, but more so when you're writing with it. Some people prefer to write with heavier pens. I've met some people who actually have really heavy pens. I'm like, how do you write with that? But it also depends on your grip preferences and probably your hand size. Like, I don't really have big hands, but I also don't like just having two small pens. Like, these Covecos are really great, but honestly, for long-form writing, I still prefer something longer. And I think having a really nice grip and, like, sense of what pen you want to use in terms of the weight will really determine also how frequent you'll use it and how you'll write with it. It takes a while to kind of get used to picking out pens, even in person, because when I started my fountain pen journey, per se, I, my pen venture, I don't know, I'm gonna try to think of puns here. Um, it was a pandemic, so I didn't really have any like way to figure out how heavy the pen was. I just watched videos and just assume. And um, after that, when I went to pen shows, where you kind of like take time out to look at the pen or you go to a store, it really helps because you have, it's like kind of trying on shoes or clothes where you're like, oh, should I get a medium or a large? But then the medium has a better fit, you know? And I think it's the same with pens because when you pick out the pen, you don't just hold it, you know? You kind of want to write with it and you want to see how it sort of like, you know, you will know it's kind of cheesy, but I feel like there's like some kind of harmony involved if you want to see how i shopped for this pen make sure to check out my san francisco pen show video where it took me maybe a few minutes to kind of like get used to writing and i'm like do i really want this and then i kind of knew that i did another thing to consider also is if you're signing with the pens maybe you don't need like you know some people have a pen for signing stuff you know documents maybe you need a heavier grip one you know or maybe you're like oh no, I want to just collect a lot of Kavecos and like use them for um, daily writing. So then if you're doing daily writing, you want to consider that the weight of the pen isn't so heavy that you get, your hand gets sore. That's not the point. Actually, as far as I know, fountain pens were created so that the writing would be easier because it's a bit smoother than, you know, when you're writing with a gel pen or a ballpoint pen, there's more effort that's involved and we kind of want to... Um, make it easier for us in that sense. Next up, the color and size. I wanted to group these together because they're not, they're both not super, super essential, but I think it does make sense to kind of consider that, especially if you're very particular like me. So fun fact about me is I have a very specific color scheme, even the way I dress the way I decorate my room, the way everything looks on a table. I feel like that's part of my visual narrative and visual compass as an artist. So with that in mind, I also kind of, 
when I started getting into fountain pens, I had a bunch of different pen colors like coral, I had a Lamy Mango, I had a Twisby White, I think Twisby Echo White, but eventually I just narrowed everything down into what I like seeing on my desk. So I think that is something to consider if you are the type of person who prioritizes aesthetics and also just, you know, having something color coordinated. For me, it's just nice because it also allows me to, you know, narrow down my options where like, okay, like for example, Pelican comes out with a new collection of like pink. I'm not gonna buy that because I don't have pink pens. I have a white tortoise shell Pelican. So that means all of my other pens are on this shade of green, you know? I think this is the brightest green I have. And actually this was gifted to me by Christine. So I think it also helps me kind of narrow down how I decide on the planners and journals I use as well. So it's just like, I don't know, it works both ways for me. So I think that's why I consider it a lot. And I wrote in my notes, it's like clothes. Like I mentioned earlier, it's like clothes. It's like having accessories that kind of match your um, your collection or your stash. Another thing I wanted to note is I just, it's funny cause like I like white a lot for clothes and like neutral colors, which is like so evident with my pen choices because like something like this like when I was choosing the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini this is a mini size this is the Pro Gear Slim for reference but when I was choosing I was like oh I want white because white and gold just looks really great together so I think those are just some key things you can you know kind of gauge with when it comes to uh, your picks I think the hardest thing to pick out in terms of pen colors for me is mustard. I really like mustard, yellow in general, but I don't really find a lot of mustard pens. Maybe pen companies you can make more so I can buy, but um, instead I just settled for more like greens and browns, which I feel like matches a lot of the things I own. I also have some oranges here and there. So um, yeah, I think it's nice to like, just sort of like narrow down your collection that way. Another thing I want you to consider is the size. So for example, I showed you the Sailor Pro Gear Mini. It's more or less same, it's a bit taller than the uh, Caveco Sport. But if you carry something frequently, for example, a planner, or you have a traveler's notebook with you, usually you want something that's very portable and um, not so heavy and high maintenance. If it's high maintenance, make sure you have a pouch to kind of, you know, house it in, like what I use frequently, which is the rickshaw pouch. But I think that's something worth considering because that will also affect the collection that you're gonna have. And also, um, I think I would recommend like, for the desk, the big sizes you can get are like more of the heavy duty, like Pilot ones or Pelican. Actually, this Pelican is very light. I just bring it around also wherever I go. Actually, my pens travel a lot. So I think that's something I did consider while um, buying pens. I just wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be too intimidating to actually not bring it with me. This is the most fragile one I have just because the nib broke like literally less than a month that I got it, but I was able to fix it while I was in the Philippines. So yeah, color and size, very important and something really worth um, considering as well. Next, we're gonna get a bit technical and talk about the filling mechanism. So with regards to the filling mechanism, there are different types of ways you can fill inks on your fountain pens. It depends on the pen type and it depends on the pen brand. So when you're shopping for fountain pens, make sure to check out these specifications as well. I read through every single thing because you don't know what you're gonna miss out. And one of the things would be the filling mechanism. So some of the common ones I personally use, the first one would be the cartridge. So actually for cartridge, um, it's the one that you usually get when you buy a pen. And I personally just don't use it because cartridges are hard to, um, special ink cards are hard to come by in cartridge form. But I did notice recently that Pilot and Sailor have made cartridge versions of their popular inks. For example, Sailor Shikiori has um, 
cartridges so if you use sailor and you use a specific type of ink and you just don't want to have the hassle of having to clean it constantly then it's good to just you know buy the cartridge and get it over with another thing you can do but i'm too lazy is to have a syringe and like empty out the cartridge ink the ink inside the cartridge and then put in new ink but that's one thing to consider. Most pens have their designated cartridges or a standard size. For example, Kaveco Sport follows the standard size. I don't know which, what else, but I don't personally use cartridge as much. I think the one that I use the most is the converter. Converter is basically what you find inside the um, pen. You also mostly buy it separately from the pen unit so every time you go to a, sh a shop and you buy a pen make sure everything is like you got the checklist ready pen converter ink usually that's the the top three and of course you have to make sure the nib is well and writes well so i remember when i was starting that was the first thing i was like oh my gosh so the converter is how you put ink in like yeah be the like how did you think you just dip it it's not the olden days um another thing that you can also consider is the piston filler so if you write a lot and you use the same ink a lot i highly recommend getting the last two ones that i'm gonna mention the first one is a piston filler so my pelican is actually a piston filler but the most common one that i'm pretty sure everyone knows is the twisby so that's TWSBI, Twisby, it's a Taiwanese brand. Their Twisby, the Twisby is very well known for their Echo line where they use, it's a piston filler basically. Twisby Echo, Twisby Diamond Mini is also, I think most Twisby pens are um, piston fillers. And one of my first pens was actually a Twisbo, Twisby, Twisbo. One of my first pens was actually a Twisby Echo and it was really convenient because if I needed to write a lot, which I do, um, you just load it once and maybe finish it in like two to three weeks. It doesn't take long to um, It takes long to finish basically compared to a converter I think the biggest challenge for the converter is actually when you're using a tiny pen Because the tiny pen means that the converter is also tiny inside So that's also one of the reasons why I switched out using a fountain my tiny my mini fountain pen to a regular gel pen for my Hobonichi weeks, which is like practical you know you have to make decisions that are not just for the aesthetical purposes but also for the practical reasons why you do it so yeah pistons are really great um and ideal for long form writing the last one is i think my personal favorite because it was also the selling point for me into getting my pilot custom 83 um the back the vac filler so it's a vacuum filler and i think it just stores so much ink like i write mostly every day with my pilot pen but it takes me maybe once a month to do the whole um, refilling of ink and what I do for my Pilot Custom 83 is I don't change up the ink as much. Currently it's inked with a Kobe Arima Amber but before I think for a whole year I just inked it with the same ink which is the Pilot Iroshizuku Tsukushi which is really um, true brown color it's my favorite but sadly it's discontinued so I like vacuum just because okay i'm capricorn i like to make things very efficient for me i just want to write i just want to get it over with i don't want to keep you know unless i'm exploring inks but this pen is not for that purpose and also i found out upon research that actually the vacuum filler pens are great for flying because it's just easier you know it doesn't like combust or like explode sometimes pen poops on the plane so highly recommend like taking care of them making sure they're like or like you put them in a ziploc or whatever but personally for me i haven't had really bad experiences with pens so fingers crossed and as i mentioned they are well traveled in that regard i would also say that if you're the type who's like constantly experimenting on inks to try using more of the converter filling mechanism because for that you can like load just a bit of ink and then try and then you know change it up or if you just want to explore inks honestly just get a glass pen or a kakimori nib dip pen which is what i use and it's just easier for you to kind of figure out how things look like but most of the time the ones that use for like glass pens or swatching is different from the actual pen because as i mentioned the nib size really matters Last but not the least, and obviously we have to talk about this, 
one thing to consider i think this is probably the primary thing you can consider but again it depends on the preferences and what stage are you in the fountain pen journey i don't know i feel like i'm in the almost done exploring but eager to know more era of my fountain pen journey but of course you have to consider the price and your budget so pens in general are expensive that's true but i will tell you that it's more economical in a sense that you don't keep buying pens you know you can buy a gel pen like this you buy the refill that's it you keep buying 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 but with pens you just buy one if you have a bottle of ink i'll probably that'll probably last you for a good five years or something if you if you have a lot of bottles of ink buy a bottle of ink buy a pen use it every day and that's it just fill and go fill and go so in some way it is more economical in that sense and I, I would say it's a bit less wasteful if you don't use that much cartridges so in that sense yes it's expensive but you're paying for the investment that goes with it um, I would say also entry level fountain pens don't go beyond like $25 in general so I listed down a couple of my favorites when I started I got a platinum preppy I got a pilot kahuno I got a Lamy Safari. Lamy Safari was my first pen and a Caveco Sport. So these are like the top four I would highly recommend for starters. I would say the mid-range ones, not really mid-range in a sense of budget, but my budget is like nothing over 500, okay? So I told you I'm not the expert on this. This is like my personal budget. Like the most expensive pen I bought is probably 350 dollars that's it i don't want to spend anything over that because i just feel like i'm i'm too clumsy to buy a very expensive pen and probably drop it on the floor so that's just i don't think i'm um the best person for it but i've been told that i take care of my pens really well and they look like they're brand new so thanks um i do try to take care of them um but yeah for mid-range for me it's something that's like below 40 dollars 50 dollars and it's a really good investment if you kind of want to, you know, elevate your experience, your writing experience a bit. Obviously, the more expensive the pen is, the more um, high quality the nib is and the body or, you know, the components of the pen in general, the pen unit. So mid-range for me is like Caveco Student. I really love Caveco Student. I feel like they're so underrated. They are really nice. And when they came out with these like retro ones, I'm not even paid to say this. They are really, I, I wanted a green one. So I'm still thinking if I should get one. When they came out with these um, uh, retro colored ones, I was like, I'm getting them. They're really nice. And they're actually quite heavy. So it's nice to kind of get used to, the, to, the, to that kind of weight once you like kind of move forward and try different pens. Um, Twisby is also a great like mid-range uh, pen. And I know a lot of people who start with Twisbees because they're also really wet writers. So I feel like this the nib is really nice. Like Twisbees nib is really nice. The only funny thing is I kind of outgrew silver trim. That's why I don't have that much silver. I think the only silver I have is Lamy pens. This one and the Kakuno. But otherwise most of them are gold or like copper. So... Yeah, I think that's just a preference thing and just, again, it's like an aesthetic thing. Um, I would say anything over $100 is more of my, $100 to $350 is like my range of like more high-end pens, which includes mostly Sailor pens. Um, I forgot to mention, I used to own a Sailor Le Cool. Le cool. It's like a entry pen. I feel like it's a... It could be an entry pen if you're trying to get into the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, Pro Gear. Um, I got it. It was probably like 50 bucks or something. I gave it to my sister now, but it's a really nice uh, starter pen. There are also a lot of Sailors, but I've never tried them. It's the 1911 Sailor Profit. The, these are the um, relatively more affordable ones in the, in the Sailor family. But I went straight to Pro Gear Slim. So Pro Gear Slim, Pro Gear, the big difference is the nib. Um, so Sailor Pro Gear Slim is 14K and Sailor Pro Gear is 21K. So my Nagasawa Gear Ske is actually 21K. It's a Pro Gear and it's just the writing experience is like 
top notch. I'm I'm very up for having this really smooth writing where it doesn't feel like it's scratchy. So that's kind of the sweet spot I'm looking for and a very fine nib. So it's kind of hard to come by. But eventually you will really find it once you try out different ways to um, write and also pick out pens. Um, another thing I think within that range is also Pelican. At least the Pelicans I have, like Pelican M400 is a bit like mid-range in the Pelican. Um, I don't know that much about Pelican, but I remember wanting to get this because it looks like something someone from the 60s would own. And I'm a big fan of anything retro and anything analog, which explains why this is my job and this is what I talk about. And yes, I like to geek out on pens, just like everyone else geeks out on different things. So I think that's pretty much it. I hope that gave you a bit of context in terms of how I factor in these things that make me want to buy a pen. It takes me a while to kind of really decide on which pen I want to get. That's also why every time I buy a new pen, usually something, I sell one of them. I, the, the nice thing about fountain pens is you can always destash your pens, you can always sell them, and when they're limited edition, the value is even higher. So I think that's something to consider. You can like, you know, um, have someone adopt it. And I always like that idea so that it feels like you're like, oh, once you make that decision of buying this pen, you're done. What if you don't like the pen? Personally, I haven't bought any secondhand pens, but if I find a really nice vintage one, I would probably buy. I'm also not a big fan of vintage pens. You know, I think in the scope of fountain pens in general, you just have to figure out what you want and what you don't want. And the more you use the pens, the more you try different inks, the more you'll consider like, oh yeah, this is why I don't like this. Right, I forgot this nib writes really wet, you know? It's not something I can really tell you, but based on the recommendations I have, I hope you figure out what pen works for you. And if you have your grill pen, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how you pick them and tell me a bit about how, which factors you consider when it comes to buying a fountain pen and figuring out what works for your system and your life. A little bonus, I also want to mention a couple of channels that you can check out for fountain pens because they help me immensely in picking out my fountain pens. So the first one is Goulet Pens. Um, Drew and Brian of uh, Goulet Pens really talk extensively about fountain pens. They still do and they have a, an online shop um, based in the US. Second one, obviously, is Yoseka Stationery. Um, they are such amazing people and they do a lot of informative videos about writing and also the different nib sizes if you want to know what the difference of the sail a Sailor Pen, King of Pens, Pro Gear, Pro Gear Slim. Make sure you watch their channel. Joe of Jobs Journal, my bestie, because we both love to talk about fountain pens. You will also see that most of our pens are the same because sometimes I feel like we are one person. Um, uh, yeah, so make sure to check those out as well because you'll be able to get a lot of resources. There are a lot of ways to um, get through it on the internet. I also want to give a special shout out to my friends that I've met at the San Francisco International Pen Show. I miss you guys. See you next year. I learned a lot while going through the booths and also like meeting a couple of people, going window shopping and seeing a lot of pens. Um, it's just a really, it's like a pen party basically. Some of the nice people I've met at the pen show, Lay of Laypod, um, Jessica, Franz, Cheryl, Mark of Rickshaw. Hi to everyone. Michelle, I went shopping with her at the Sailor booth, didn't buy anything. Um, Ariel, Toasty, so many amazing people that I met at the pen show. And speaking of um, pen show in general um, and the fountain pens, make sure to check out this um, clear stop set. This is designed by my good friend Christine of Everyday Explorers. It's called Currently Inked, and I'm gonna link it, link it down below. It's what I used for last week's video, and also it's great if you want to try out inks and try like different pen nibs and sizes. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. It's very meaty. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking of what to talk about, about fountain pens. And I do hope this gave you some insights on what you can consider when it comes to choosing fountain pens. And also lastly, this November, make sure to check out 
me and Job's Patreons because we made printables to celebrate Fountain Pen Day last November 3rd. So I'm gonna link that down below and make sure to check out my other videos on fountain pens or if you're new here, I basically do a lot of analog stuff and also talk a lot about my um, creative pursuits in journaling and traveling and also fountain pens. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys soon. Always be creating. Bye!